Welcome back to the special edition of KTSM 9 News at 6. Countdown to kickoff. Natasia, the 100 battle of I-10. And this rivalry wouldn't be complete without, say, like, how about the dance team? Or, yeah. say, the cheerleaders, the band. They all kind of encapsulate what college football is all about and bring that atmosphere and that energy. That's right. And the UTEP dance team has a storied history. And our very own Stephanie Shield, she's part of that history. I just love this. Stephanie, yeah. you are a part of the dance team here at UTEP. Natasha. Well, that's right. When I was here at UTEP from 2012 to 2016, I was part of the dance team, but back then they were known as the UTEP Gold Diggers. Since then, the name has changed to the UTEP Dance Team, but it's really more than just a name for these dancers. It's decades and decades of history happening right here at the Sun Bowl. You know them when you see them. From cheering along the sidelines... To performing at halftime during UTEP football games, the iconic dancers are deeply rooted in minor history, but you might know them by their former name, the UTEP Gold Diggers. We're in a new era. UTEP dance director Leslie Lopez stepping into the role four years ago, bringing a new team name, the UTEP Dance Team to be more of a collegiate look. After more than half a century of being known as the Gold Diggers, Lopez says the university asked what she thought about a name change when she came into the position. She looked to other Division I college teams for inspiration. They had very simple, clean, classic uh, names. So from there, we, we decided, you know, let's just use our name, which is UTEP and just add dance team to it. It's a hard change as the decades old Gold Diggers was the only name the team had ever known. I do get some, you know, step back like, hey, why did you change it or what was wrong with it? To which Lopez says the Gold Diggers aren't gone, just revolutionized. Even though that we're not called the Gold Diggers anymore, that doesn't mean we're not carrying on the traditions or the legacies. We're we're actually still carrying those traditions and um, creating new legacies. Some of those traditions, the choreography for classic dances like the UTEP fight song. So when I see past Gold Diggers, ex-alumni, they're like, hey, I know that fight song. So yes, I still want to make it very traditional just to carry that on in their honor. I was really disappointed. One of those not happy about the name change, Melanie Thomas, a UTEP gold digger from the 70s. And I was very proud to be a gold digger. I mean, we are the miners. Despite the disappointment in the change, she says she sees the gold digger's legacy shining through on the field. I was very impressed. She's done a great job. Um, I, I just thought they looked very professional. You could tell that she was really making an effort to to give them the look that they should have on the field. So the UTEP dance team, formerly known as the Gold Diggers, were formed in 1932. The UTEP Special Collections Department walking us down memory lane of the Gold Diggers. The dancers, deeply committed, displayed in old yearbooks from their first performance up until the 70s. At the time, they were aware of the negative connotation that comes with that term, you know, chasing money. But the girls at the time didn't care. They went along with it because they thought it was a fun and funny way to go ahead and show off that school spirit. That school spirit shining through not only at UTEP football and basketball games, but at community and humanitarian events. They were involved in the war effort with World War II to keep their morale up and going. They've been so heavily involved with the community, both inside and outside of the campus that I think they definitely deserve a lot more recognition. So what's in a name? If you ask the current generation of the UTEP dance team, they know their place in school history and tradition. You do know it as the Gold Diggers if you've lived here for a long time, if you've grown up here. It is definitely such a blessing to be able to go and compete against other collegiate teams and represent 915 and show what El Paso brings to the table. A name gone? but certainly not forgotten. Go, Go Miners!
And the UTEP dance team continues to make history. Just this spring, the UTEP dance team brought home its first ever national title after winning in the Spirit Rally Division at the NDA Championship in Daytona, Florida earlier this spring. Andy, Natasha, back to you. Stephanie, thank you so much. Such a, a great look at that history there with the uh, dance team. And speaking of history, we got a lot of history here on the line. Yeah. You got 100 years of the Battle of I-10. This is also the first time in decades that UTEP and New Mexico State have been in the same conference playing this game and both athletic directors playing a key role in getting New Mexico State to Conference USA. That's right and I believe we have our sports director Colin Deaver. He's back there on the field yeah, with go. some special guests. Hey Colin. Hey, what's up, guys? We got Tim Center, the athletic director, and we got the, uh, the silver trophy at the right here to talk to shop. Your guy calls this the best kept secret in college athletics. When you are describing this rivalry to people who maybe don't know anything about it, how do you describe it? And I'll start with Mario. Well, it's really rare. First of all, not a whole lot of rivalries have played 100 years. And you've got a freeway that you can be on each other's campus in 30 minutes. So it's a long storied history. And uh, this is a special, special game at the 100th anniversary. Yeah, I, I would kind of treat it like, like two brothers who are always playing and competing and trying to beat each other up all the time, even though they love each other, right? But, but there's the beauty of it. And you just can't wait to beat up your big brother uh, and, and make sure that everybody knows who's the champion in the house. Great analogies from both of you. Now, obviously, two years ago, Conference USA falls apart in a lot of ways. You guys hadn't been in the same league for 62 uh, years at this point. This game is the first time since 1961. It's a conference game. Two years ago, how much did you guys work together to maybe make sure you were kind of in the same boat when all, everything, all the dust settled? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, you know, obviously we really desire to get into an FBS conference, and you want to have an ally who's fighting for you. And, you know, as much as we want to win this game, and it's a heated rivalry from a competitive standpoint, we certainly got to thank you, Ted, because because Jim uh, and Heather Wilson, the president, were big advocates of us in the room. And I don't know if we get in if it's not for these guys. So do we want to win the game? Heck yes. But do we really appreciate what UTEP did? 100%. Well, and what I tell you, I, I really enjoy the $1,000 monthly checks that I get for Mario. Uh, you know, and that, that's his entry fee into the league. We'll leave it at that. What a great guy. guy All right, Colin, thank you. And you know, I uh, studied multimedia journalism here at UTEP, but I have to hand it off to NMSU. They also have an amazing journalism program over there. A lot of UTEP grads like yourself who obviously majored in, in journalism. New Mexico State, we have just as big a contingency of New Mexico State yeah. Aggies in our newsroom. One of those Aggies is our very own Shelby Cap, who is uh, standing by. She's out live with us here tonight. Hey there, Shelby. Andy and Natasio. Well, we're definitely seeing fans come in. A lot of orange, but definitely some crimson. And as you mentioned, I myself am an Aggie, graduated from the journalism department back in 2018. But NMSU, not just training a journalist, but also filmmakers, creative writers, and animators. And these students getting real world, hands on experience, and many times a job before their diploma. It prepares students really well to go into. Uh, the broadcasting because they've done it by the time they get out of here. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jennifer Hazlett. And I'm Noah Padaka. NMSU student-run broadcasts live on the air multiple times a week, training students in both English and Spanish. Gracias por continuar con nosotros en Noticias 22. NMSU Journalism and Media Studies offering a Spanish language component. Super, super important because there's so much of a Spanish-speaking community throughout the U.S. and um, we need journalists, photographers, digital editors, producers who, um, who, are, who are bilingual. While filmmaking classes have students creating feature films. I don't know another film school in the country that actually is making a feature film or professional feature film with a largely student um, production crew. So that's really unique. From feature films to client-based filmmaking. He puts a lot of trust into us when it comes to checking out equipment and we're working as producers, directors, scheduling uh, time with the, with the clients and we're also 
uh, we have our own camera teams and uh, our professors aren't even really on set. Students working both in front of and behind the camera, double majoring in the Creative Media Institute and Journalism Department with big dreams in mind. From being able to work with ESPN to be able to work on um, short feature films um, in town and outside of town, it's been really a great opportunity for me as a double major. Gathered here for the, the head of the Journalism and Creative Media Department saying NMSU students get hired. I'm quite often begging our students to show up for commencement because they've already left uh, to, to go pursue their jobs. departments looking into the future with the goal of creating a creative media and journalism and media studies school at NMSU, something that the head of the department says hasn't really been done at NMSU in the past, but dreaming big for the future. Andy, Natasia. Very much for that. And joining us now is Renee Scott, Vice President of Student Success at New Mexico State University. Thank you for joining us. You bet. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so let's talk about student success. I know it starts at admissions, it goes through engagement and also retention of students. So tell us a little bit about that program. You know, it's it's exciting to be on campus and we're seeing some great numbers in students retaining and students when we asked them, would you do it all over again? 95% of our students said absolutely yes. And so I think one of the things that we've done really well is be proactive in helping our students feel a sense of belonging on campus, connecting them to what they need to be successful in the classroom. We know the places that hang them up and we reach out to them in those moments and I think that sense of belonging has been really, really important coming out of a pandemic. Excellent. Real quick, we got to get your prediction. We've been asking everyone. I know you're, I know you're an Aggie. What, what, maybe a score too. How about a score? Hey. Aggies by 10. Aggies by 10. Ah, by like 10. It. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Tonight. All right. Thank you very much. All right. We'll be right back after this quick break.